Welcome back to Sunless Skies. In the last episode, we explored Pan. And we've also already explored Winter's Reside. So, next two places are the Brazen Brigade and... Is this the Cypress King's Grove? Or is, maybe I haven't quite discovered the name of it yet, I'm not sure. But I think these are the three factions in these platforms around this place. The Brazen Brigade seem to be devil worshippers. Kind of literally. <laughs> Uh, this clot of sable groves is home to the devils of the Brazen Brigade. At its heart stands the adamant idol, whose arrhythmic piping determines the current hour in Pan. The Brazen Brigade are its interpreters. They promise they are utterly impartial. Hmm. So this is where the piping is coming from. The Temple of Almost Time. One ruin rises above the rest, dismal in its desolation. It commands the grove. It, uh, from its broken windows, the adamant idol can be seen like the moon viewed from a tower. The commanders and knights of the Brazen Brigade reside within. Here their solemnest rituals and their dearest venerations are performed. Can't, can't do anything. Yeah, I'm unknown to the Brigade. Makes sense. Let's go to the Grove of Far Too Late. Here, the Brazen Brigade venerates the Saints of Hell. Reliquaries speckle the ground like gemstones on a cardinal's vestments. A hill rises from the Grove. Halfway up it, a broken temple rests below soaring arches. Behind the hill, from the center of Pan, the adamant idol is clearly visible. Long shadows move below the arches, swaying to the arrhythmic wail of the pipes. Enter the grove. Walk in the fiefdom of the Brazen Brigade, the devils that aspire to seize heaven's thrones. Thou hast taken and shall not render again. The carved faces of saints peer down to you from arches and columns. Some have expressions of serenity, their mouths gently smiling, or there are many mouths gently smiling. Other, more ecstatic saints are contorted in sanctified rapture. A curious dilettante waves you to join him by a sunken arch. You're just in time. They're about... He's cut off by the sound of horns. A troop of devils thunder past. A single devil in a suit is their quarry. They pursue him to the boundary of the grove where he disappears in the mists. They hate the republicans of their kin, the dilettante whispers. They will not suffer equality here. Oh. Yeah, so, sounds like nice people. By the way, the repentant devil, I believe, is a republican. What exactly is the definition of republican? Because obviously that's not like the American, like the, not what I think of when I think of American republicans. So define republican. Belonging to or characteristic of a republic. Yeah, what's a republic? Republican government. Here's the definition of a republic as a form of government on Wikipedia. It's a form of government in which the country is considered a public matter, not the private concern or property of the rulers. The primary positions of power within a republic are not inherited, but are attained through democracy, oligarchy, or autocracy. It is a form of government under which the head of state is not a monarch. Yeah, uh, elected individuals represent the citizen body. Yeah, so that's what they're talking about when they say Republican. Not the American Republican, which seems to stand against pretty much all of those principles. Join the, I can just join the brigade. Hell no. You will not be able to join any other faction on Pan afterwards. Hell no. I could receive the blessing of the vilest. Oh god, you tra- Oh no, you trade some of your crew for it. Six of your crew? I'm not giving six of my fucking crew over to a bunch of demons? Devils? They are devils themselves, right? Yeah. Uh, no. Uh, speak to the curious dilettante. What can he tell you about himself? Does he know more about the Brazen Brigade? The Histories of Hell. 
He looks up from his sketchbook. I wish to witness suffering. Not out of sadism, you understand, but my station in life has always been privileged. My art, myself, lacks something for it. Wishing to learn more of injustice, of doomed causes, I came here. The brigade have been very accommodating. I think they appreciate the interest. As for the brigade, they're unique among devils I've known. Their saints are the grand devils who once served in the heavens, but rebelled and were cast down or imprisoned or fled. The stories are inconsistent on the point. Okay, I'm leaving. Goodbye. Probably never going back there, unless a quest takes me there. So let's go to this last one here. I know I've already technically, like, been here in this little circle, but I don't want to cut. Because I haven't gone through here very much. I want to take in the sights before... I, I don't want to cut stuff away until it becomes kind of... Repetitive? Feels repetitive and doesn't feel new anymore, but this still feels new to me. I love the crickets. They're very comforting. Not so much the distant thunder. Heartcatcher Gardens, is that the name of this faction? The Heartcatchers? A grizzled coterie of gardeners care of this unusual orchard. The plants that grow here are heart catchers, whose fruit looks and speaks like human heads. Okay, that's pretty cool. The Mamiricon. The inner gardens are surrounded by a hedge as thick as a fortress wall, knotted with thorns and strangled with vines. Behind it are the grove homes of the heart catchers, steeped in Eleutheria's midnight and frequented only by their favorite servants. Within the Mamiricon, the heart catchers are biggest trees and clustered with mature heads. Each plant is a council of intellects debating the secrets of the sky. <laughs> that sounds so cool. Seek entry. An arch in the hedge leads inside. A dozen heads, gray-haired and bitter, peer from among the leaves. Turned away. Be gone, the heads insist. You have not been chosen. You have not served. As far as you can tell, the whole hedge is the body of one vast, brambly heart catcher. As you turn to leave, one of its heads whispers something, and the others snigger. When you ask what was amusing, a hawk-nosed head apologizes. Sorry, we'll just never get used to how much your heads look like fruit. <laughs> Fuck you. The nurseries. A series of finely manicured indigo lawns cover this corner of pan. Peculiar plants grow in the beds, tangled as rose bushes and budding with fruit. The fruit is lumpen. Perfectly formed facial features are growing on it. This one has a frantic, staring eye. This one is growing an ear. This one keens pitiably through tiny, trembling lips. Silent gardeners, whose broad-brimmed hats are hung with veils to hide their faces, tend devotedly to the plants. Only thing I can do is speak to the green-fingered old warhorse. He removes his hat. The face beneath is scarred and bleak. A soldier's face. He must occupy a senior position, for the other gardeners nod their heads as they pass him. Beneath his overalls he wears a ratskin suit, ragged from the plant's playful thorns. There's a deadness to his gaze. Uh, ask him about himself. Well, no, let's actually ask about the hard catchers first. Learn more about these peculiar plants. They are a species native to the heavens, he observes. Here in the nurseries, we help the younger specimens grow to maturity before transferring them to the inner gardens, the Mamiricon. He indicates some colleagues who are digging up the largest plant in the garden and wrestling it onto a cart while it tries affectionately to throttle them. <laughs> what? You note its fruit, which are now big enough to resemble the faces of bawling cherubs. 
Once fully grown, the warhorse continues, their fruit can reason and speak and debate, more effectively than we even. Each plant is an entire council or faculty. Ask him about himself. Judging from his military bearing, he was not always a gardener. No. Once, I was a soldier and a commander of soldiers. I was good at it, as such things are measured. Now I keep the gardens, tend the heart catchers, and pray that I have no further effect on the world at all. Another gardener passes you, carrying a bucket. Kneeling by a bed full of budding heart catchers, they tip the bucket over. The contents ooze redly onto the soil. Redly. Are they giving them red honey? Hmm. Ask about the petitioners. A number of desperate looking people are lined at the hedgerow gate to the inner gardens. The heart catchers know many secrets, he says. Among them is a method to capture a death and seal it away so that it can't trouble you. If you fear a particular end, like drowning, say, or freezing, the heart catchers could hide it away. He takes a cage of squirming mice from his pocket, fishes one out, and drops it into the thorny vines of the closest plant. The vines constrict. The mouse squeaks. The plant shivers. It's no guarantee of immortality, of course. A thousand deaths await in the skies. Don't I know it. Ask about entering the inner garden. A hedge encloses it. An archway permits entrance, but is protected by a mature, mature heart catcher whose cynical faces peer from the thicket. They excoriate intruders with insightful critique. Excoriate. Excoriate means to criticize someone severely. Criticize, find fault with, censure, denounce, condemn. Okay. Quid pro quo. Only friends of the heart catchers may enter the Mamiricon. And successful petitioners, of course, but the latter are blindfolded. Perhaps, if you performed a service for the heart catchers, they would warm to you. How do I do a service for them? Well, let's bid them goodbye. Yeah, maybe. Is there something I can do that doesn't require me to be in their good graces? Well, this is one of them, actually. Like, I could... Yeah, I could give the heart catchers Eleutherian Mysteries. I suppose they would like that. Acquire a Crimson Promise, which may be useful in certain stories. That is creepy. Two rolls of Thirsty Bombazine. Cask of... of <clears throat> excuse me. Cask of Navaratine Gemstones. An Eleutherian Mystery. Oh, it's going to cost experience. Only a thousand, which really isn't that big of a deal. But that's the first time I've ever seen experience as a cost. Three Savage Secrets? This one actually isn't too bad at all. I think I want a Crimson Promise just because it's totally new. Oh, this has got to be... This has got to be the one. Prove your value to the heart catchers. If you do, you will not be able to ally with the Brazen Brigade or Winters Reside. Okay, so I have to throw my hat in with one of the factions, pretty much. I can't really, like, help them out with thro without throwing my hat in. Seems like. So what do I need for that? Four Eleutherian Mysteries. Okay, God, I almost want to... Mm, I almost want to do that because I'm so curious about the heart catchers. But that just isn't Elizabeth as a character. They would absolutely go with the... What are they called? I guess just the revolutionaries, I suppose, is what they're called at Winter's Reside. Yeah. Um, wait, are we done with this place? Yeah. Let's go back to Winter's Reside and see what exactly I need to join them. Mm. 
It's not any of those. Is it under here? Ah, accept an offer. Yes, I need... Oh, I just need three Eleutherian Mysteries. Yeah. Okay, so I just need to go around Eleutheria and do stuff, and I'll gain some mysteries and eventually join the Revolutionaries. So where to go? Um, I guess I'm just going to do a prospect. So where have we been told exists? Acles and Caduceus. Acles, was this the one that was near where I came in? South, southwest. Yeah. Let's do that one. South, southwest. So that's like here. I'm going to go get stocked up. Hit pan and I'll be right back. Okay, I've got as many seeds as I had. Unfortunately, I only had three in the bank, and I need five to complete the prospect, but oh well. And then filled up the rest with supplies and fuel. Let's be on our way. Don't forget, too, that we have our new weapon to try out. Well, I mean, I've already tried it on nothing, but a new weapon to try out on an enemy for the first time. This one. They move so fast. It fires so fast. They look so cool. What's the, like, heat to damage ratio? 25 heat to 18 damage. It's pretty good. I mean, this one's 15 damage to 60 heat. <laughs> this one's much closer to a 1 to 1 ratio of damage to heat. Let's just go this way. Maybe a little bit more south. There we go. Oh, that's a thing that I can hit. That's like the roof of a building, isn't it? It's sideways. That's like a pillar? Oh, hey. What are you? You an enemy? Empyrean Outrider. They don't seem to be enemies. Yeah, I guess I have no contact with the Empyrean people at all. They're the people that were once allies with London. Their ship looks incredibly cool. It's a badass ship. arches and mangled masonry a world upturned it's more of those weird night things which I suspect are the what were they called the enemy things that attack me Enemy things that attack me. Yes, enemies do attack me. That, That's a good sentence. Oh. Grievers, that's what they're called. is running away from me. Decipher the 
sigils. All right, that's the trade. I don't want to do that. Let's examine the innards. We've done that before. Yeah, this is where we find sigils imprinted inside of the bone. And now I have an Eleutherian mystery and a vision of the heavens. That's just a chunk of a roof right there. Oh, shit. Boosted the wrong way. Hey, what is that? Looks like a mystery, maybe. Where, where did the body go? The loot? It wasn't that far down. Did it disappear? Splinter of a lost library holding tattered manuscripts. Delve, yes. You scavenge old lore from the shelves, but they were guarded. Wait, what exactly did I get? I'm not sure where it went. Is it in my hold? No. Oh well. I need to go more south. Incognito Princess, are we at Ackley's? We must try some of the midnight tea. Our music's wonderful. There's like a whole toxic water thing going on, or acid or whatever that is beneath me. It's like those pools we saw um, up above on our level, but this one's way below us and it's huge and there's even bubbles that I can see rising and popping. Wow, this place is so cool looking. Beautiful. Oh, those look like uh, crop fields. Whoa, what is, what is this? I didn't dock. Something is scratching at the exterior hatch. An alarm junior signaler summons you to an exterior hatch. A persistent scratching noise is coming from the other side. You look out of the nearest window, but can't get a good view. There's only the velvet sky, a gleam with frosty stars. Uh. That's creepy as hell. Open the hatch. <laughs> Elizabeth's curious. But be ready. The Wanderer. You fling the door wide, pistol in hand. The cold reaches in, and the hard light of the stars. And something else enters, too. Something small and furred and yellow-eyed. It's one of the feline eccentrics cats. Its fur bristles with frost. Its muzzle is brown with the blood of something unnameable. Ignoring you, it pads calmly towards the engine room. Has it been out for a walk? The eccentric story will continue when you try to speak with her. What the hell? I think they got... I think they got some special cats. Um... Oh, I was gonna go speak with Feline Eccentric right now, but I have to do this first. You disembark onto a soggy wooden platform barely supported by the marsh mud below. 
It leads past several squalid huts and the hulls of scavenged engines to the warmth of a marketplace on wooden stilts. Nearby, what remains of an ancient monastery just holds on against the ravages of time in the swampy ground below. Enter the port. Something is going on down the other side of the monastery. Fire flickers. Treachery carries on the wind. Sabotage. A woman smoking a cigarette watches from the shadows unaware of your presence as a group of grizzled skyfarers attempts to force the monastery's doors. Unlike the crumbling stone, these are made of solid new metal and more than up to the task of repelling the attack. However, with every blow against them, the monastery itself seems to shudder. Dust rains from high up. Stones creak. Will not take much, much, uh, will not take much before something gives. Uh, I mean, I have no idea what's going on here. I don't really want to get involved and, like, take a side when I don't even know who these people are and what they're doing this for. Uh, I, stay back. This is simply not your problem. Uh, the war cry echoes through the marsh. Urchins, ring breakers from old London, from the look of them, surge at the attackers armed with broomsticks with sharp, sharp objects taped on the end. Colander helmets and cardboard armor. In the name of the Valkyrie, they shout, launching their attack. For Sigrid! They swiftly rout the attackers. The woman with the cigarettes is long gone, leaving behind nothing but the smell of expensive ash. This sounds like a, a joke. I mean, it seemed like it was serious, but they ran out with colander helmets and cardboard armor? The port opens out in front of you. The Devils of Carillon claim to be experts in the assessment and improvement of the soul. They would describe yours as disappointingly clear, almost transparent. Why, why did it pop up with that just now? Okay, now we can speak with our officers. Feline eccentric. Dissuade one of the eccentric's cats from terrorizing a stoker. The man is pressed against the wall, white-faced and sweating. The cat sits in front of him. It's back to you. It stares at the stoker, though from here you can't see why this terrifies him. Get it away, the stoker pleads. It's weighing my soul, judging it like I was one of the dead. He tries to raise his hands to shield his gaze, but the life seems to have gone out of them. They flop limply back to his sides. The cat is statue still. What is going on? Frighten the cat away, clap your hands, shout at it, stamp your foot, that sort of thing. The cat's head whips around to face you. You stumble back. Instead of eyes, two writhing sigils of savage fire blaze in its face. It blinks. The sigils are gone. Replaced by its usual, uh, supercilious yellow gaze. It hisses at you and stalks away. The stoker thanks you and hurries away. Acquire a vision of the heavens to continue the eccentric story. I mean, I have a lot of visions of the heaven. Um, two writhing sigils of savage fire. Correspondence. Investigate an eerie noise. Wait, what does this require? Your engine is in good state of repair. Eccentric isn't too busy. Yeah. Your dreams are plagued by a star wind, moaning and mournful. In lieu of sleep, you walk the corridors for a time. A mysterious noise is coming from the engine room. The Midnight Patriarchs. The eccentric is asleep in her tangle of blankets at the foot of the engine. Three hunched shapes cluster about her, her cats. One of them gnaws at the fingers of the eccentric's left hand. Another sits on her chest, its weight making her struggle for breath. The third chews insistently at her hair, tugging at it like yarn. The eccentric is caught in a dream, her sleepy attempts to dislodge the cats watery and weak. Spiders in the well, she moans. My eyes were fire. The dead groveled. One of the cats looks up, then the others. 
As one, they consider you, their eyes yellow as sovereigns. Then they melt into the crannies of the engine room. Something's very wrong with your cats. Talk to her about her cats. You discovered them chewing and smothering her while she slept. Why does she tolerate this? The prison without walls. Her black cat, Belleth, climbs up her legs with its claws and sprawls about her shoulders. Because they're mine. Or I'm theirs. I'm not sure there's a difference. Look, I don't want to make a fuss. Best to just leave it alone. She removes the bandages on her fingers to reveal the tracery of light scars. See, it's not so bad. She tries to sound brisk. You're clearly unconvinced. The eccentric sighs. They've been with me since Piranacy, she says. If you really must know, we'll need to go there. The chaplains can explain. Piranacy lies to the west, southwest of Pan. West, southwest, so that's like here. Try to talk to her cats. The cats of London can talk when they deign to do so. They can be polite, but like to give the impression they know more than you do. And perhaps they do, for they are hoarders of secrets. The cats do not respond to your greeting. When you ask about the relationship to the eccentric, one of them yowls, another washes its paw, the third yawns. You comment critically on their lack of courtesy. They only stare. You see no comprehension in their eyes. You try the ultimate test. You share a secret, careful to get one detail wrong. They don't correct you. They don't patronize you. They don't even give you a disdainful look. These aren't cats. Imposters? Hmm, what are they? Oh god, offer to get rid of her cats by more direct means. No? I do want to read this, though. What is there, for example, to prevent you simply throwing them into a well or abandoning them on a wreck? Oh, or filling them into a weft of unraveling time? I'm... I'm not going to do that. I don't know what they are, and obviously... The feline eccentric is attached to them, and cares about them. No. Okay, well, I think this is a pretty good place to end the episode. So I hope you've enjoyed so far, and when I return, we're going to explore the swampy world of Ackley's.